Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Now today I'm going to be talking about the Overwatch League Week 7 I think we're up to for uh, this for Season 5 for the Overwatch League. This is this is, this is also the um, the beginning week of the mid of the mid season madness uh, tournament or well, qualifiers which I, I should actually say um, and and this is obviously going up for the tournament which will be on I think around July or August. So. Uh, before I actually talk about the results, just remember, like, comment, subscribe, it would really help me. So, let's now go on to the results, and these are the results. So, obviously, week one, uh, well, sorry, week seven, um, only had the North American matches play, or the West region play. So, it'll, so the East will start playing next week, which would be very interesting, especially with all the roster changes. And speak of that... I should probably be talking about that right now. So as well you can see, there have been plenty of roster changes uh, between the kickoff clash and the midseason madness. I'll just list them off as um, as we go. So I think the first one was Marvel and Striker both leaving the Boston Outbreaking. Now I, I'll be honest, I wasn't too sure if this was actually between the the kickoff clash um and, and miss it uh, and misses man as well was uh during the playoffs in the in the kickoff clash i believe forgot to talk about it but there it is marvel striker i both left the ball snap rising he's now lost they, they signed a new content creator as, and the name of drama king matt never heard of them but i think that's pretty cool uh the vancouver titans uh they have got rid of seiko and they finally finally got rid of flubby and pew now obviously no disrespect to flubby and pew um, but this was long overdue, I'll be honest. I, <laughs> it's, it surprises me that they survived for that long in that team. I mean, they were horrible, I must say. I think this team would have been a lot, uh, would be a lot better if they had a, a, a different coach. And obviously they do have a different coach, but there's only one coach, uh, which doesn't really help. It doesn't really change anything as well. I think they definitely, they especially need one or one or two more coaches in in that team but it's actually it's, it's actually quite surprising to me that seiko actually left because god for the whole time i actually had the wrong scene i apologize for that uh but but i'll still continue it's surprising to me of how of like what that the guy of seiko I, th I thought seiko was decent uh, apparently not because but that that really does suck for uh for seiko uh hopefully he comes back into the league very very soon <coughs> Uh, so next one, um, the new coach for the Vancouver Titans is Depe. He has joined the Vancouver Titans as their head coach. I don't know who's going to be their assistant coach, but we just have to wait and see. Molly, he has left the Guangzhou Charge. Uh, KDG has left the Toronto Defiance, the head coach. I know lot. I know the stuff about logics. Um, in the Twitter replies, basically saying thank God took you long enough. Basically, <clears throat> of them, um, of them, uh. Letting KD, um, KDG go. <coughs> uh, Mikey, he has returned to the league with the San Francisco Shock as their tank player. I think he's an off tank by my... Uh, no, wait. No, never mind. He's a main tank. So, Mikey, he has joined the SF Shock as their main tank. Vulcan has left the NYXL. I'll be honest, I completely forgot he was in the roster. But, um, yeah, he has left the NYXL after not playing a single map for them. Marvel, he has joined the LA Valiant, or stuff about, I think it was the Chinese, or, no, it was the Korean, S some of the coaches and players were, like, paying Marvel's contract for some reason, that was, like, stuff about that, um, Mayhem will possibly, may what may be the biggest talking point during this offseason, quote-unquote, um, so, Rapal, he has joined the Florida Mayhem as their flex support to, repl to replace Kariv, who has, joined the mayhem as their assistant coach and for some reason they got rid of adam which really sucks because that's basically the second time that they've been screwed over by well that um, he's been screwed over by um a, an esports team especially in, in overwatch it sucks for him i do hope he comes back into the league at some point um but i mean it looks pretty slim right now but i truly do hope that he comes back into the league because this is getting ridiculous i think he he definitely um, has the talent to be in the Overwatch League. This, this, is, this is also not me saying that because I'm Australian and he's Australian, so it's kind of like patriotism there. It's not really because of that. I generally do think he has the Overwatch um, talent, well, the Overwatch League talent to be in the league. 
Uh, Paris General Ross made some changes as well. They got rid of Glister. I think and this is just due to, um, I don't think it was due to communications, or maybe it was due to communications, or maybe it was because of the culture. I think he maybe wanted to be in Korea, which makes sense. I mean, uh, being away from family for a very long time def um, definitely hurts, so I can understand that. And they replaced him with Dove. Now, I don't know who, I didn't know who Dove was, I'll be honest. I, th I think I did, I'm, I clicked on his Wikipedia when it was announced, and he, uh, and he was formerly from Uprising Academy, Odyssey, um, Solaris, so some, you know, some, like, decent, um, some decent tier, uh, tier 2 teams in, in Contenders. He's now jumped his way up to the, uh, to the Overwatch League. Molly has joined the LA Valiant. Silence has rejoined the Atlanta Reign as their analysis. And HO1, or Ho, uh, Ho1? Ho uh, one, how one? I don't know how you say his name. I'll be honest. He has joined the NYXL as their main support. No, as their flex support. I, I think. Um, just I think it's because Gangnam Jin he has been uh, underperforming, or Myung Bong has been has been under uh, underperforming. I mean, the whole of the NYXL team have been underperforming, so I'm not that surprised there. A change that isn't listed here is most recently coldest and Wuyo. They have both left the LA Valiant. So they are currently free agents. None of them have retired, um, but <clears throat> both of those uh, player, well, both player and coach, are currently um, a free agent. Let's now move on to the actual results now, as I should probably get back into what I'm actually supposed to be talking about. So let's. <sighs> I, I, I'll talk about what, what I really want to talk about at the end, but we got the London Spitfire winning against the Florida Mayhem and op opening up the match. Um, Landed was MVP, very very close game. I mean, especially um, and I can I mean I can was pretty much of a stomper. Um, Ilios was pretty close. Oasis was pretty close. Uh, Colossia wasn't that close. I mean, it was clearly the Mayhem winning that. But the Spitfire they've been looking really, really good now, surprisingly, and. Definitely, definitely now mid-pack team. SF Shock versus the Dallas Fuel. Just the Shock destroyed the Fuel. I'm not even. I'm not even that surprised. Proper was MVP. Washington Justice versus the NYXL. Um, it was a 3-1 victory for the Justice. Krillin got MVP. Pretty close at, at, at the very end of Colossio, but the Justice squeezed that out. That was the first day. Then the second day, we got the we got the, the London Spitfire versus the Toronto Defiant, and that was the London Spitfire. Winning that match, uh, Spark got MVP. Um, I mean, it was a moderately close game, but I mean, the game that the Spitfire won was basically um, very easy for them. Atlanta Rain versus the Boston Uprising it was a three-two victory for the Atlanta Rain against the Uprising. Kai was MVP. He's been he was like ripping apart everyone in this um, in this week. Jesus Christ. Um, and then we got the Vancouver Titans versus the LA Gladiators and Depe as their head coach didn't really go too well. Um, the Gladiators basically stomp them. I mean, King's Row was pretty close, but uh, it wasn't really enough for the for, for for the Titans to win out the match. Next up for day three, the the Houston Outlaws versus the Washington Justice, and there was the Houston Outlaws winning against the Justice. Piggy got MVP. Uh, pretty moderately close game. I mean, it doesn't look uh, close, but I mean, the game would have been also uh, would have been really close. The Paris Eternal versus the LA Gladiators, and it was once again the Gladiators winning that one. It was Skewer who got MVP. I forgot to mention it was actually it was Patty Fan who got MVP against the Titans. This time against the Eternal, it was Skewered. Um, once again, I mean, the Eternal have been struggling in this whole season until uh, the next day. Uh, then we got the Atlanta Rain versus the Dallas Fuel, and <clears throat> what the hell is happening to the Fuel? I really thought they would actually make this game really competitive. The only time they were actually really competitive was at the very last one, at Watchpoint Gibraltar. That was all they made it competitive, and Venom got MVP. But it's it it's it surprises me that they actually <clears throat> that the Fuel have not been looking good um, at the start of this week. And finally, day four, we got the Florida Mayhem versus the Toronto Refine. It was the Florida Mayhem winning that. Uh, Hydro got MVP. Obviously, this would this was the first victory for Kariv, being as the assistant coach and Rappel, um, or Rappel, I don't know how you say his name, 
uh, as the flex support or was it yeah yeah flex support player I don't know if he actually did play in this match but um, that's that the SF Shock versus the Boston Uprising I'm the I mean I'm not even surprised that the Shock have been winning this uh, this match I mean proper MVP no surprises there oh my God Paris. Go up and go crazy because you finally won this season before the Vancouver Titans. Uh, they won against the NYXL 3 2 Dove. Um, the new recruitment for the Eternal was MVP. I, I mean, I'm. I, it's cool. It's actually it's great when the when these low level teams actually finally get their first win of the season. Um, what the hell was happening to the NYXL? I mean, obviously, the NYXL, they have not, I mean, just like the fuel. They haven't been looking too good. But at least, like, the fuel actually, they did pretty well in kickoff clash. NYXL, they did horrible. They were, they were horrible during that, um, uh, during the kickoff clash. This is worse, um, now. So, if you're an NYXL fan, you probably should start worrying about the team because, oh boy, you. You poor NYXL fans need some copium in your <laughs> in your blood. And then finally, the Houston Outlaws versus the Vancouver Titans. I'm not even surprised. Dante MVP. What else do I really have to say? So I'll go on to the standings. So this is what the standings looks like for the West region. We'll ignore the East. So we got the San Francisco Shock and the Los Angeles and the Los Angeles Gladiators with Gladiators with nine points. The Dallas Fuel with seven points at third. Then in then uh Three teams have six points, that being the Houston Outlaws, the Atlanta Rain, and the Florida Mayhem. Uh, further, uh, further uh, uh, once again, three teams have five points, that being the London Spitfire, the Toronto Flying, and the Washington Justice. Um, the Boston Uprising has two points, the NYXL and the Paris Eternal both have one point, while the Vancouver Titans are still winless with zero points. Let's now have a look. Let's now have a quick look at the uh, Week Eight matches. So next week's matches. So on June twenty fourth will be the uh, will be the start off weekend for the East Region, the Philadelphia Fusion versus the LA Valiant, and the Chengdu Hunters versus the Seoul Dynasty. Then for the West, we got the London Spitfire versus the NYXL, Florida Mayhem versus versus the Dallas Fuel, and the Atlanta Rain versus the Vancouver Titans. Then for the East, Guangzhou Charge versus the Hangzhou Spark, Shanghai Dragons versus the Seoul Dynasty, and the Philadelphia Fusion versus the Chengdu Hunters. Then for the West, Washington Justice versus the Toronto Defiant, the Atlanta Rain versus the San Francisco Shock. That'll be a great game to watch. And the Vancouver Titans versus the Dallas Fuel. That might be also pretty good as well, just depending on how the fuel will be performing. Next up is the East on June 26th, the Guangzhou Charge versus the LA Valiant. That might be a pretty good one. And the Shanghai Dragons versus versus the Hungry Spark. And then finally for the West, the the San Francisco Shock versus the Florida Mayhem, the Houston Outlaws versus the LA Gladiators, and the Houston and the Paris Eternal versus the Boston Uprising. My bad. Uh, so that is week eight matches, and that's really bad as well for today's video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Catch you guys all next time in the next one. Goodbye.